Welcome to Legion Builds Reloaded, where I revisit my older builds to guide you to once more bring these characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters and it's dedicated to every one of you who subscribes to my channel. As long as you like it, I'm going to keep doing this crazy thing, so thank you. Today we're bringing back to D&D Eric Draven from The Crow. On Devil's Night, Eric and his love were brutally murdered, all for standing up for what they believed in. One year later, Eric was brought back from the dead to bring the monsters who killed his love to justice by having a super-powered rampage that killed most high-level criminals in the city. In his resurrected state, Eric's reflexes are greatly enhanced, and he soon finds himself gifted with near-immortality, healing abilities, and psychic abilities. With with these psychic abilities, Eric can absorb memories from others, sense memories within objects, or force others to live those memories he has stored within his mind. With his bonded raven, Eric is a force of revenge that drives everyone in his path to cower in fear. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. We're using standard point array to keep things simple and we are multi-classing. We have three minimums, so you need to keep an eye on them. We'll start things off with charisma at 15. You were a performer in life and now your sheer force of will makes you unstoppable. Dex will fly in at 14. Your new state has greatly increased your speed, agility, and reflexes. Wisdom will be 13. You have some impulse control issues, trust me, it's understandable, but you do have some pretty good awareness. Con will be a 12. Over the course of your rampage, you take enough damage to kill dozens of people, but you keep going. Strength will be 10, and we're going to dump intelligence. Neither are important for this build. Eric was a human, but has been reborn. Reborn, found in Van Richten's, is just that. Place plus two in the decks and plus one into wisdom. Ancestral legacy grants you two skills of your former life. Take perception and intimidation. Deathless nature makes you harder to kill. You have advantage on death saving throws. Advantage on saving throws against being poisoned or diseased. You have resistance to poison damage. You don't eat, drink, or breathe. And finally, you don't sleep and can't be put to sleep. Your long rests are only four hours long, where you are simply inactive but awake of your surroundings. Knowledge from a past life lets you call on memories to give yourself a d6 to any skill check you make, adding to the d20. You can do this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. To round this lineage out, you speak common and one language of your choice. For background, let's grab the entertainer. This gives you proficiency in one musical instrument, disguise kit, and the skills acrobatics and performance. Level 1 Monks start off with two skills, take Athletics and Stealth. You have proficiencies in Simple Melee Weapons and Short Sword, which will be called Monk Weapons, and one Artisan Tool or Musical Instrument of your choice. For your saving throws, you are proficient in Strength and Dex. Unarmored Defense gives you an AC of 10 plus Dex plus Wisdom when not wearing armor or using a shield. Martial Arts improves your combat skills. When not wearing armor, your unarmed strikes and Monk Weapons can be Dex based instead of Strength for a attack and damage, you can make an unarmed strike with a bonus action after taking the attack action, and your unarmed strikes and monk weapons can use your martial arts dice for damage, unless the weapon damage is better. This starts off at a d4 but will grow. Level 1 Warlocks begin with an otherworldly patron, the source of your power. Let's see, you have a crow. In the original story, the spirit of death told you what you needed to do, sounds like the Raven Queen, or saw a personification of death. Hexblade, found in Xanathar's, makes you a better killer. Hexblade's curse lets you mark an enemy and curse them. With a bonus action, you can curse a creature within 30 feet of you. For the next minute, or until the target dies, you gain the following benefits. You deal bonus damage to them equal to your proficiency bonus. You can crit against them on a 19 or 20, and when they die, you can regain HP equal to your Warlock level plus Charisma modifier. You can do this once per short or long rest. Hex Warrior gives you proficiency in medium armor, shields, and all melee weapons. You can also bond with a weapon and use your Charisma modifier instead of Strength or Dex, but your Dex will always be better. By the way, Warlock also gives you proficiency in light armor. You don't wear armor or carry shields, so it doesn't matter. Ignore all armor. Packed Magic makes you a fake spellcaster, and Hexblade expands your spell list. You start off with two cantrips and two first level spells. For your spells, shield adds plus five to your AC and stops magic missile as a reaction until the start of your next turn. Cause fear awakens the dread within your prey. Targeting one creature within 60 feet, you force a wisdom save. If they fail, they are frightened of you for one minute while you maintain the spell. While frightened, they have disadvantage on all attacks and skill checks while they can see you, and can't willingly move towards you. 
Mind Sliver targets one creature within 60 feet and forces an intelligence save. Should they fail, they take 1d6 psychic damage as their mind is flooded with pain and must subtract 1d4 from their next saving throw before the end of your next turn. I know you need to touch someone to cause this in the movie, but this is what I can give you. Thankfully, you can still be standing next to them. For your last cantrip, have fun choosing. Level 2 monks gain unarmored movement. Now, when you don't wear any armor, your speed increases. You now have movement speed of 40 feet. Dedicated weapon lets you turn any weapon you have proficiency with into a monk weapon after a long rest, as long as it lacks the heavy or special properties. With this, you can now make a long sword or any good damage weapon into a dex-based weapon. Key grants you key points that equal your monk level. With these points, you can use them to perform special moves, and you regain all points after a 30-minute rest. For these moves, Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed strikes with a bonus action after taking the attack action. Step of the Wind lets you take dash or disengage as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance. Patient Defense lets you turn dodge into a bonus action. Level 3 Monks now have their subclass. Way of Mercy, found in Tasha's, will do nicely. Implements of Mercy gives you bonus proficiencies in the skills Insight and Medicine, as well as the proficiency with our Herbalism Kit. You also gain a special mask that you can keep. While you never wore a mask, you did base your makeup on one, so it's a nice little touch. Hands of Healing allows you to heal with a touch. As an action, you can spend one key point to touch one creature and restore HP equal to your Martial Arts dice plus your Wisdom Modifier. You can can also combine this with Flurry of Blows, replacing one of the two attacks with a healing as part of spending the same key point. Hands of Harm allows you to hurt your enemies with a touch. When you hit with an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to deal an extra necrotic damage equal to your martial arts dice plus wisdom modifier. You can do this once per turn. Deflect Missile lets you reduce damage you take from a ranged weapon attack with a reaction. You reduce the damage by 1d10 plus monk level plus dex modifier. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can spend one key point to throw the projectile as part of the same reaction. Show that to Tintin, I think he'll appreciate it. Level 4 Monks earn our first ability score improvement, Bump Up Dex. Slow Fall lets you reduce falling damage with a reaction by 5 times your monk level. Quickened Healing lets you heal yourself by spending 2 key points and rolling a martial arts dice and adding your proficiency bonus. Your character level 5 now, your proficiency bonus gets bumped up to plus 3. Also, Mind Sliver now does 2d6 psychic damage. Level 5 monks receive extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Stunning Strike lets you stun enemies you hit. By spending one key point when you hit a creature, you force a con save. Should they fail, they are stunned until the end of your next turn. This means they cannot move, take actions, take reactions, can barely speak, automatically fail strength and dex saves, and all attacks against them are at advantage. Focus Aim lets you turn a miss into a hit. When you miss, you can spend up to three key points and then add plus two to the roll for each point spent. Finally, your martial arts dice are now a d6. Level 2 Warlocks gain Eldritch Invocations. These are special features you gain from your patron to make to better complete your mission. You get two at this level, but I'm only going to give you one right now and suggest another one next level that you can switch out if you want. For your invocation, Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor without a spell slot or material components. This gives you an AC of 13 plus dex for 8 hours. For your new spell, Hex lets you curse a creature within 90 feet of you with a bonus action. For one hour while you maintain this spell, you will deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage when you hit with an attack. Also, when you cast this, choose one skill. They will now have disadvantage on that one skill while the spell is active. If they die before the curse is up, you can move the curse to a new creature with a bonus action. Level 3 Warlocks now have a Pact Boon, a special gift from your patron. It's finally time to get your crow. Pact of the Chain gives you the Find Familiar spell, which you can cast as a ritual. When you cast this spell, you summon a crow to your side, except it's not a crow. It's a celestial fae or fiend that looks like a crow. While your crow is within 100 feet, you can communicate telepathically with it, and as an action can see through its senses. You will see and hear everything it sees in here, but while this is active, you are blind and deafened. You can also forgo one of your 
your own attacks that have the crow attack. Now let's grab the invocation you want. Gift of the Ever Living Ones from Xanathar's improves your short rest when you are near your crow. While your crow is within 100 feet and you roll hit dice to regain HP, all your hit dice are at maximum value. You also now have second level spell slots. Now any spell you cast is also at second level, so check the spells to see if they can be upcasted for more benefits. For your new spell, Misty Step allows you to vanish from one spot and appear in another. With a bonus action, you teleport to 30 feet to a spot you can see. Best way I can explain how you vanish from under that table. Level 4 Warlocks earn another ability score improvement to cap off decks. For your final spell, Mind Spike forces a wisdom save on one creature you can see within 60 feet. Should they fail, they take 3d8 psychic damage and you will know their location for the next hour while you maintain the spell. They cannot become invisible or hidden to you. Your character level 9 now, bump up your proficiency bonus once more. Now, plus 4. Level 6 monks gain key empowered strikes. Your unarmed strikes are now magical. Mercy monks gain physician's touch. Now when you use your hands of healing, you can end one disease or condition effect. These conditions can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. When you use your hands of harm on a creature, they receive the poison condition until the end of your next turn. With this condition, they will now have disadvantage on all attack and skill checks. To end this level out, your unarmored movement is now 45 feet. Level 7 monks receive evasion. Now when you succeed on a deck save, you take no damage and only half on a failure. Stillness of mind allows you to end one effect on yourself that is making you frightened or charmed with an action. Your character level 11 now, Mind Sliver now does 3d6 psychic damage. Level 8 monks earn another ability score improvement, wipe out that negative in intelligence. Level 9 monks gain an improvement to their unarmored movement. You can now run up vertical surfaces and across liquids, but you can't stand on them. It's time once again to bump up your proficiency bonus because you've reached character level 13. Bring that up to a plus 5. Level 10 monks now have purity of body. You are immune to all diseases and poisons. Your unarmored movement is also bumped up to 50 feet. Level 11 Mercy Monks receive Flurry of Healing and Harm. You can now replace all your Flurry of Blow attacks with Hands of Healing without spending an extra key point. Also, you can now replace one of your Flurry of Blows with a Hands of Harm once per turn, without spending any more key points. Finally, your Martial Arts dice are now a D8. Level 12 Monks earn another Ability Score Improvement to bump up Con for more health. Level 13 monks gain Tongue of Sun and Moon, one of the weirdest monk abilities. You can now understand and be understood by any language. You can still only read the languages you know, but now you can talk to everyone. There are things about monk I will never understand. Your character level 17 now, your proficiency bonus is now maxed out at plus 6, and Mind Sliver now deals 4d6 psychic damage. Level 14 monks now have Diamond Soul. You are proficient in all saving throws, and you can spend one key point to re-roll a failed save. Your unarmored movement is now 55 feet. Level 15 monks gain Timeless Body, and this is completely pointless to you. You no longer age. Can't be aged magically, but you still die of old age. You also don't need food or water, but you're dead already, so none of that makes sense. Another ability that actually makes no sense for monks, even the ones that are alive. Our final level is level 16 monks, and you earn our final ability score improvement. Place this into con to raise your health up even more. If you're wondering why I'm not bumping up wisdom for more AC, you kind of got arrogant close to the end. Seriously, you could have waited for top dollar and skank to be alone and then take them out. But no, you had to rush into a room full of people and guns. Yes, I know you're immortal, but that doesn't change anything. Work smarter, not harder. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are Strength 10, Dex 20, Con 16, Intelligence 10, Wisdom 14, Charisma 16. Your total levels are Warlock 4, Monk 16. Let's dive in. 
You truly are a killer of killers. You can attack up to four times with your fists, hitting at plus 11 and dealing 1d8 plus 5 damage that's magical. You can also attack someone's mind and deal 4d6 or 3d8 psychic damage. You can heal yourself or others and effects on others. You have an AC of 18. You are proficient in all saving throws. Your deck saves are great. You can re-rolled failed saves. Finally, you are someone who can get anywhere you want. You have a total movement of 55 feet, can move 110 feet, with a bonus action, can teleport 30 feet, you can run up walls, across liquids, double your jump distance, and can see through your crow's eyes to spy on anyone. Downside. What is bad about this build? Your healing really isn't great, but it's still 1d8 plus 2. A better wisdom save can fix that. You're not completely immortal with only 106 HP taking the average, so you might also use all that healing for yourself. You have minor resource management with only 2 spell slots and 16 key points. The key points aren't a huge issue, but the spells could be useful depending on the situation, so you'll have to watch that. Get out there and avenge your love and teach the scum of the city that one day they will reap what they sow. Thank you all for joining me today. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify. And make sure to check out my Patreon where you can help decide next week's new character.